Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Poets and Quants online MBA event. A big thank you to our panel for being here. I'm your host, Anna Watson, with Poets and Quants. And today we have a great list of questions on the application and admission process. Before we get started, let's meet our guests. So if each of you could please introduce yourself, the school you represent, and your role, and also a fun fact about you. And um, Jessica, let's start with you. Awesome. Well, hi, everybody. My name is Jessica Ward. I am the Program and Relationship Manager for the Online MBA Program at Northeastern University, specifically in the Damore McKim School of Business. Um, and a fun fact about me is that I actually live in Michigan, um, and I get to work remotely and support um, Northeastern from afar and travel there a couple times a year. Great, Jessica. Thanks for sharing. And Gail, we'll go to you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Gail Sager. I'm the Director of Operations and Missions Operations at SMU Cox in Dallas. Also work very closely with our online programs. Um, and I guess a fun fact about me is I am also a professional MBA student at the moment as well. Wow, it's great to have both perspectives. <laughs> and on to Robert, who it is actually evening for. He is in Berlin. <laughs> yes, good evening from Berlin. Hi, my name is Robert Ryan. I am one of the admissions managers here in ESMT Berlin. Uh, I've just been here since February, so relatively new here. Um, fun fact about me is, um, while I'm an endangered species, I'm actually the only Irish person in the company. <laughs> I love how you refer to endangered species. <laughs> uh, now to have some uh, general information about each of your schools, um, including its mission, value, and reputation. And Robert, let's go to you. Sure. So yeah, in ESMT Berlin, we've been here since about 20 years now. We just finished our 20th anniversary celebrations. Um, the school itself, our mission is really to develop uh, entre entrepreneurial leaders who think globally, but with a more of a uh, responsible and ethical edge to it as well. So we're based very much in the heart of Berlin in what used to be the old uh, East German Parliament building. So we've got a lot of history around us uh, and a lot of cool facets there too. So yeah, we run a lot of different programs, um, our full-time MBA, as long as part-time MBA, our global online MBA, which I specialize in, and a number of um, executive and master's programs too. Great, thank you, Robert. And Jessica, what about you? Yeah, so here at Northeastern University, the thing that is the most important to us is experiential learning. Um, so we believe that folks learn best by doing, and so we incorporate that learn by doing approach into everything that we do keeping in mind that technology and innovation are also part of our core values. And so we want to be sure that we're at the forefront of, of everything being done in this space. Um, and so we really believe in that global entrepreneurial spirit um, and are really proud to be, you know, one of the top 50 universities in the space. Yeah, and Jessica, just a follow-up. Um, if you wouldn't mind explaining for our viewers, maybe some don't know what experiential learning is. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm happy to cover that and uh, hopefully throughout the session can incorporate more examples of that. Um, but for us, that looks like having a problem, a um, issue, a uh, something that is a real life technology that you're thinking about implementing in your business and coming at that approach in, okay, well, I am the director of HR. So like how does my background play into this technology? I, uh, you know, I, and so the whole point of it is giving examples and opportunities to work as a team to approach a problem or solution that you'll be faced when you work. I think all of us can kind of relate that we get into a job and we get faced with a problem. And sometimes we're like, oh my, what do I do? And so what we've really incorporated into our programs are examples of that throughout all of our courses of these are real issues, problems, um, technologies that could be coming on board and what you need to take into account as somebody that works in this space. Great, thank you. Yeah. And Bill, uh, what about your program? 
Yeah. So like I mentioned earlier, we're located in Dallas, Texas. We really focus on three different pillars with our curriculum across all of our different programs, including our online MBA. So we focus on leadership, analytics, and similar to what Jessica was talking about, experiential learning. Um, so for that, we really want you to be able to take what you're learning in the classroom and put it into practice right away. And also, we really focus on not just the first job that you're going to get out of school, out of graduate, after you graduate or while you're working during the program, but we want to be the ally for the rest of your career and provide that support throughout your professional development. Yeah, thank you, Gail. Um, and now kind of talking more in depth about the program. Um, so a series of questions here take as much time as you need to answer, but I'm wondering if, if each of you could tell us about the program. How long has it been around? How long generally does it take to complete? What level of flexibility is offered in pacing, class selection, required courses versus mandatory courses? And finally, is the content asynchronous or synchronous? And Gail, let's start with you. Sure. Thanks, Anna. So with our program, uh, SMU has been around for, the business school has been around for over 100 years, but our online MBA program, we launched in May of 2019, and our first cohort graduated in 2021, so we're really excited about that. The program, it's designed to be completed in 24 months, so two calendar years. You take classes over the fall, spring, and summer, so adds up to that 24 and as far as the required courses versus elective type of courses, it's a 52 credit hour program and our electives make up about 14 of those. So it's a very cohort based, very lock stepped, a um, lot of live sessions. So you're logging in at a certain time in the evening, you're everyone's on camera, it's very interactive. And then you have some asynchronous work that takes place outside of that as well. Um, did I miss anything, Anna? <laughs> I don't think so. And I just okay. wanted to ask, was it, yeah. it probably wasn't coincidental with the pandemic because these programs take probably years to develop. <laughs> or was it, or was anything implemented because of the pandemic that you didn't expect? Yeah. So we launched prior to the pandemic. So definitely in the works before that. Um, but obviously technology and, and being flexible, that really put us in a good place for the rest of our programs to have that technology in place to make sure that students were comfortable in an online environment. It wasn't just throwing people into a Zoom room and letting them uh, drink from the fire hose, so to speak, but making sure that faculty were comfortable, that we had implementation in place, that they were comfortable presenting and that they had their curriculum and they knew how to structure that curriculum in an online environment. And also just making sure it's a smaller cohort. So when your average class size is about 15 to 20, um, so making sure that it is interactive and so you're not just one of hundreds of people on Zoom um, at the same time. Yeah, makes sense. And Robert, uh, what about some of the in-depth details of your program? Sure. So our global online MBA, which we call the Gamba, which I may say, the Gamba was launched uh, two years ago. So we're really excited to have our first graduates actually at the end of this year, finally, so we can finally have alumni to show off. Um, so in terms of that program, it's a it can, it's quite flexible in that it can be completed within two to five years. So it's quite a large large window for completing that. Uh, yeah, twenty four months is that would be the standard. Its biggest flexibility role would probably be with in between the modules. So we have seven core modules, and in these each take fifteen weeks. And then in between those, you can decide how long a break you're going to take depending on how busy your life is in terms of, yeah, home life, working. So that's why you can uh, complete your course. Um, for people who are completing it over a longer time, they generally tend to meet more people and tend to work with more people as the cohorts have overlapped. So that's generally considered quite an advantage. Um, what can I say so far? I mean, we're really looking forward to finally having these alumni that we can finally uh, <laughs> get to tell us the benefit of the full time. But um yeah, absolutely. In terms of our pacing and our classes, the uh, classes will be considered 90% self-driven and then 10% with live online classes. So as we're a global online MBA, we have to run these at least twice in different time zones to allow people working in different parts of the world to coordinate. So that's something that we stress to people a lot that you will be working with people from all over the world in different time zones. So very much like the world of work itself. You're going to be working in groups, working together, and yeah, hopefully our live classes will will show that. So, yes, thank you. 
Yes, thank you, Robert. I'm hearing a lot of flexibility on your end. Um, on to you, Jessica. Yeah, so Northeastern University has been in the MBA market since 1951. We brought our program online in 2006, which we're super proud to be one of the first to do that. Um, I think it does show our, our history of innovation and, and our love of education. Um, since we had one of those first OMBAs on the market, we decided in 2021 to completely redesign our OMBA to make sure that we were being competitive with the market and providing our learners an experience that was going to prepare them um, for the world that has evolved. Um, and so we were really methodical in making sure that we built a program um, that responds to current business demands um, and societal challenges that exist within our culture. Um, this program can be completed in as quickly as 18 months. Um, and it could, on average, I would say about two years is what we're seeing people completed in. Um, our when we redesigned this program, flexibility was at the forefront of us. We understand that most folks in our program have, you know, at least seven years of experience. And so they're, they're really, they need that flexibility because of other things that might be happening in their lives. And so all of our coursework is 100% asynchronous. Um, we have optional live sessions uh, where learners get to connect with faculty members once a week. We see really great attendance at those. Over 80% of our learners want to participate in those and to attend those, even though they're not required. Um, and that's just a time to make sure that you're synthesizing all the information that you're learning online. Um, and we also are really excited that we get to um, offer some focus areas that people can kind of create their own curriculum um, because we do have so much flexibility in our um, in our program. So students are able to um, choose 29 credits at, at just what sounds interesting to them. Um, and that's over half of what the total credits are required to complete the program. We have 50 credits that are required. Thanks, Jessica. And a little follow up on that. Do students need to declare a concentration? If so, when is it selected? Um, how is it offered? And then what guidance and support do students receive in that process? Uh, let's go to Robert. Sure. So our global online MBA is very much a generalized MBA, um, but with electives to choose along the way. So some of these electives um, are changing by the year, and we try to make that kind of reflect changing market spaces and the feedback that we get so one in particular that we've launched would be the valuing valuing of startups for example so berlin is very much the startup capital of europe so people ask us could we possibly have an elective that reflects that so we try to meet those needs so in terms of support throughout it of course they we have a, our program managers here and a career development team to talk people through you know what track are you looking to go down and you know trying to give them as much information as to think, are you sure this is the one you're going to go down? Because as I've seen in the last while is that people have been heavily influenced by stuff that they've learned here and they've completely changed track during it. So once again, yeah, we try to make it as flexible as possible, but yeah, they, are, they always have someone they can talk to throughout the whole thing. And Gail, what about you? Yeah, similar to Robert, we are also a generalized degree program um, students do have the opportunity to take seven different electives, but it's more of an opportunity to pick classes they're interested in, um, gain insights into different areas. They wouldn't necessarily have a concentration at the end of the day, um, but they do have support in that process and helping find those electives that are, are interesting to them. They have a student success coach or an academic advisor, if you want to put it in different terms, and they'll meet with them every other week, and they can obviously schedule additional appointments as needed to make sure that they're on the right track and finding what they're interested in, but also on the right track to graduation as well. Thanks, Gail and Jessica. Yeah, so we have optional focus areas for our learners. They're not required to declare any of these if they would not like to. However, if they would like to explore that option, we support them in that journey. We have 
business analytics, finance, and entrepreneurship and innovation as our three current um, focus areas. And we're looking to expand on those just based off of interest from our learners. And uh, we too, kind of similar to Gail, have a success manager that is dedicated to their success in the program, including um, any academic support that they would need. Um, and they have uh, regular opportunities to connect with her in kind of whatever mode that they would like to, we use Slack, email, and then also we have um, Zoom meetings as well. So we really are just kind of at their fingertips in whichever mode they like to reach out to us, which we see each of them having their own way of liking to connect with us. Yeah. Um, and now let's pivot a little bit and talk about the interview process. So how does it work for your school? Um, and how do you think candidates can best prepare for meeting with a member of your team? And Gail, maybe you've been through the interview process yourself, so that might be helpful. Um, I also like to add a question here. Do students, um, is it required that students are working when they apply to your program? Uh, Gail, let's start with you. Sure. So interviews for our program are by invitation only. That being said, anyone who ends up being admitted to the program does go through the interview process. Um, so for those interviews, they're usually with a member of our team. I know a lot of schools did it differently. Some are with alums, some are with current students, but ours are with our admissions committee. They're done virtually so that everyone has the same um, access to those. And they're usually about 30 to 45 minutes. It's really a chance to dive deeper into your application. The point is not to scare you or trip you up or trick you by any means, um, but you know, be ready to talk about your story. Be ready to dive into some behavioral type questions. Tell me about a time when X, Y, Z. Um, we're really looking to see your leadership capabilities. We wanna make sure that you're going to be successful in a quantitatively rigorous program. Um, and we wanna make sure that you're gonna be set up for success. I would say business school is a two-way street. So we wanna make sure it's the right fit for both parties in that interview process. Okay. Um, and then, sorry, the follow-up question, are students, what was that again, Anna? Are students required uh, to be working when they apply to your program? Yes. So with that, students are required to be working. Obviously we know in the job market right now, layoffs happen and, and different things. Um, pop up different life life experiences. Uh, and our career center is definitely there to help you through that. So, you know, if something does happen while you're in the program, we're not going to necessarily kick you out because you've lost your job or, you know, chosen to go down a different path. But at the time of application, we do want to see that you're working and we want to see that you have a minimum of two years work experience, similar to what Jessica mentioned before, our average student has closer to seven or eight years of work experience. Great, thanks. Um, and Robert, what about your program? Sure. So something I forgot to mention is that we um, have three intakes per year. So January, May and September, I forgot to mention earlier. So our interviews are going on a rolling basis throughout the year. Um, yeah, again, they are by invitation only. So we receive obviously our applications. They are screened by our admissions team and then we'll invite someone to interview. So before that, we would generally encourage people to contact some of our alumni. We also have a really great team of ambassadors here who represent the school. Um, in fact, I met with them today and they're all very, very happy. So that helps very much. Um, we would encourage people to look at all of our material on YouTube as well so that they know exactly what they're getting into and to make sure that this is a good fit. So when we finally do get someone to interview, yes, same as Gail, it would be 30 to 45 minutes. We're really going deep into your motivations for doing an MBA, especially why now at this point in your career. Um, we would expect people to have a minimum of three years work experience. Um, and again, our, our average person has around nine to 11. So yeah, once we've done that, then we would like to really see applicants who not only have an interesting work experience, but if possible, have international experience. So a lot of our applicants would be are obviously coming from different countries. We'd like to see that they have experience working with global teams, organizing across, as I said earlier, time zones in particular, languages, um, and if possible, if someone has some social work to their name too. So we do definitely like to see people who are giving back to their community, and you know have a clear plan for what they want to do with this, and if they plan to give back. So yeah, that would be generally with us, the admissions team, and yeah, that's us. Yeah, I think social work is a great point to add in. Um, Jessica, what about the interview process for Northeastern? 
Yeah, so Northeastern University does not do um, interviews for our process. Uh, we use application alone to make a decision for admission. In terms of the other question about um, if somebody needs to be working um, while they're in the program. So I think that's a nuanced question for us. I think what we'd look for in that application is to make sure that they had two years of experience. And then we just want an explanation for any gaps of employment. Um, so really we would base it off of that. Um, so, you know, we know that things happen and there are reasons, um, you know, for which unemployment happens. And so um, we would just look to see what that reasoning is through a, an explanatory essay. Um, so yeah. Yeah, and might I just ask, is your application a lot longer since you don't have the interview or is it kind of standard? I would say it's very standard. I don't know what my peers in the room are doing, um, but our application is an application itself, uh, an essay saying, you know, why are you interested in the program? Why now? Why Northeastern? Uh, we ask for any transcripts from their any degrees earned, two recommendation letters and a current resume. Yeah. Um, so now pivoting just a little bit again, if I were to ask an alumni about why they choose, why they chose your program, what do you think they would say? Uh, and Jessica, let's go back to you. Yeah, so 80% of our um, participants in our program saw an, a salary increase after they left our program. And of those, 50% of those graduates saw an increase of 40% or more. So I think they would say that it really gave them an opportunity to advance in their career, which I think is a main motivator from folks when I am talking with them about why they're interested in pursuing an MBA. And I'm really proud of our program and being able to support them in that journey. Um, when they talk about the things that they love about our program, the first is our faculty. So all of our faculty are for, from the DeMore McKim School of Business. They are research faculty that are very passionate about their focus areas and allow them to really um, bring in industry experts just through their connections um, in not only Boston, but globally. Um, and so they love that we have this high quality faculty that is there to support them, that they get to meet with them once a week too. They love that portion of our program. Um, our alumni um, also really enjoys the networking aspect that we have in our program. So not only through their faculty, but we bring in business leaders, um, CEOs um, to help throughout our coursework. And so all of them just love that opportunity to get insight from folks that have led organizations before. Um, and then they have their peers as well, which they're able to stay connected through. Um, we use Slack um, and they love that communication tool in our program. Um, and so those are just a few things that I hear from them. Mm -hmm. And Robert, I know you're really looking forward to having that alumni. <laughs> um, so maybe, you know, if anything, what are you hearing from current students? Sure. Well, I mean, we also do have plenty of alumni, thankfully, from our other courses as well. So the reasons generally tend to be the same. So um, the opportunity to study in Germany, but through English, was very high, obviously, because the German language, as many of us know, is not a particularly easy one to pick up to the level that you can study in. So we're really lucky to be able to offer our courses in English. Um, Germany is renowned in Europe for its level of education and receives a really high number of international students every year. So many people really want that experience, even if it is online, of receiving a degree from a German university. So apart from that, then, uh, the flexibility is a huge component. People are definitely for all our courses i'm sure juggling busy careers with home lives and squeezing in an mba at the same time so the flexibility that we offer as well as the fact that we will be working with groups all over the world generally very big factors and for us in particular the fact that we were founded by 20 of the biggest companies in germany is a huge factor so people see these names and they see we know what these companies stand for we know how important these are to the german economy and we know that they wouldn't have set up, set up this university if they didn't think some good would come of it. So that's definitely a huge pulling factor as well. Yeah. And Gail, uh, what about you? Sure. I think the first thing that comes to mind is the access that our online MBA students have. 
They have the same access to the same faculty that teach our other degree programs. They have the same access to our career center and our centers and institutes on campus. And whether that's a, they, maybe they live locally and they want to come to campus, or if they're, you know, living across the country, they can access some of the online seminars that are available to all of our students. Um, so they really appreciate that. They like the connections that they're making and the network and the, and the reputation of the brand and the school and how that helps them progress within their career and seeing that ROI afterwards, but also that flexibility of you know, being able to travel for work or being able, maybe they have small children or whatever it might be to, to be able to log in twice a week, but then do the asynchronous work outside of that time on their own schedule too. Yeah, and this is a related question. What opportunity slash events does your school have for online MBA students to meet, um, whether it's separately or to come on campus? And Gail, let's go back to you. Sure, so I just touched on some of those, but a few that I didn't mention are our online MBA students are required to attend two immersions. Um, those don't have to be on campus in Dallas. We do always offer one a year. We offer four different options. Um, each year, so eight opportunities while they're in the program, and they have to partake in two of those. So it could be domestic. We just had students go, like I said, to Dallas. We had another group go to Seattle, um, but they could be international. We have a group going to Singapore in the fall. We had a group go to Cape Town, South Africa um, in last earlier this spring. So they have a couple of different opportunities to pick and choose from, and those are about a week-long trip where they get to interact with their cohort, but also do some experiential learning, some consulting type problem solving work for a company in that region as well. Um, so that's just one opportunity, but we also bring them in for happy hours and, and different events on campus too, if they want to get that on-campus experience. Great, and Robert? Yeah, so we offer as one of our elective series, the Berlin Experience Week. So similar, we try to bring as many of the students as possible to Berlin for one week of um, classes here on campus as well as networking events, company visits, and of course, the social uh, events as well. So for us, we actually just had this two weeks ago. And yeah, people were absolutely delighted to finally meet the people that they've been working with for so long in, in the flesh. And yeah, after meeting them, I can know that they were all really satisfied um, to finally have a chance to see the facilities as well, which is great. Um, naturally, anyone who work, who lives in Berlin has access as well. So anyone who is already in Berlin can meet up. That's not generally a problem. But yeah, on top of the Berlin Experience Week, we also run a Global Experience Week too. So also going to uh, Cape Town, South Africa in a couple of weeks. So some lucky folks would be doing both Berlin and Cape Town. So getting some extra experience in there. So yeah, we try to encourage as many people to take part as possible. Um, so they can um, experience not just us, but of course, Berlin, the city as well, which is very easy to sell, as you can imagine. Thanks, Robert. Jessica? Yeah, so kind of similarly, we do offer some uh, residential programs where it's like a five-day intensive. People join on one of our campuses. We have over 12 campuses across the globe. Um, so they gather at one of those campuses, do this five-day intensive where they go on site, collaborate with businesses in the area um, to um, earn academic credit for their program. And um, we also do offer um, in-person activities as well, just for networking and socializing. Um, we actually have one next week that I'm super excited about happening in Boston. Um, and so because we do have so many campuses across um, the globe, we're really lucky that we're able to kind of have different hubs. So no matter where our learners are located, they kind of have somewhere generally close by that we are located. Thanks, Jessica. Um, given the digital world we live in, would you say that an online MBA program helps to prepare students for the business world in a way that perhaps other programs do not? And if so, how does your program do this? Uh, Robert? Sure. I mean, well, the, I think we've all come to realize, I mean, how much we can really achieve over screens in the last the two or not. So, I mean, we think definitely by running online classes, we're giving people a genuine insight into what it is to work in international teams. So that's absolutely one of the main advantages. I mean, especially in Europe, it's really not uncommon to have teams spread out all over the continent. So that's something that people can really get used to is using the most updated technology you can use, as well as 
of course it's 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 becoming as as normal for us to socialize this way as the old ways so for sure it's giving people insight in how you can cooperate even though you might not be in the same room for sure right and jessica yeah i think learning in an online space really promotes resiliency and it requires our learners to just have self-reliance and to not really depend on other people to tell you what to do and when to do it. And I think that's a most amazing skill that a professional can have, right? It's just your own ability to get things done um, and drive your own, own learning process. And I think every online program is probably going to do that in some way or fashion, just in the, the mode of how it's done. Um, when I think about what is special about what we're doing, I think just our ability to um, have our students be collaborating, um, you know, kind of across the globe on working and solving issues and problems, making sure that they're taking on different perspectives. So they're not just coming from, you know, I'm in finance, so I'm only going to ever view this from finance. Well, that's not really a rounded out professional. You need to be able to do that from every lens in the business so that you know when you're going into a meeting exactly what somebody's response is going to be, um, maybe as a peer, um, even if you remain in that space. So um, for me, I think there's just the ability to have our students be adaptable and, and to work into groups, which I think are key in our world. Yeah, certainly. Gail. Yeah, we actually see the highest amount of diversity, whether that's gender, ethnicity, or even industry representation in our online programs. And I think that's really important for students as they go out throughout their careers to learn to collaborate with different people from different backgrounds and realize how much that flexibility and access might be important to people that they're potentially going to hire or work with down the road. Um, so it's, I think, a really important part of an online program outside of just the, the technology that we're all experiencing going forward as well ever since the pandemic. Yeah, and I know um, you guys have touched plenty on this, but I'll ask again, uh, are there key factors that differentiate your program? Um, for example, do you offer any unique courses? And I'm hearing, you know, location is unique to some, accessibility, flexibility, unique to others, but, um, you know, anything you'd like to add on that? Uh, Robert? So for us, I would say the updated electives would be partic particularly unique. I mean, we try to save those almost every year. And as I said, yes, they're definitely location specific for us, trying to keep them as, as up to date as possible for here, especially in the startup scene. A lot of candidates are, who are coming to us would be saying that this is where they want to land just so that then they can get into the startup scene. So they want to go into that as prepared as possible. So I think we are in a very unique position here that we have a lot of connections with a lot of new companies and a lot of emerging companies. So again, founded by extremely well-established companies, but aiming towards new companies, which we know will be big in the future. So definitely that. And Gail. Sure, so I talked about our immersions a little bit already, um, but our electives as well, we try to highlight some things that are really strong in Texas at the moment. So energy, we have a, a lot of electives offered around that, um, particularly one that's offered online is our special topics in energy economics. And then we have a, focus, a whole department around real estate as well. So a lot of different electives that students can opt into. Um, they don't have to choose those, but those are just a couple that come to mind that are a little bit more location based on where our school is located and what our faculty are interested in. Certainly, and Jessica. Yeah, there are a couple of things that I think kind of are key differentiators for us. The first is our experiential coursework, which I've talked a little bit about, but these are our courses that start with like a business proposition. When I think of how these courses are built, I think of like when I'm at work and I get faced with a problem and I have to figure out how to untangle it. We're essentially allowing our students to start with that instead of having coursework and then doing that. So we're saying, here's this new technology, here's uh, an incident that happened. 
how are you going to respond as the CEO of the company or the CFO of the company um, and allowing our students to work in a group um, to try to figure out the best plan forward. Then they take that plan and they present it to a former CEO, current CEO, and they give them real-time in-person feedback, in-person but online feedback, um, where they actually are able to critique their work so that they can come back and have an even better plan, taking into account some things that maybe they missed that first go around. I think that ability to have that direct feedback from professionals that have been working in the business is something that we highly value and are really proud that we get to be able to provide our learners. Another thing that I think really sets our um, program apart is our societal challenges courses. These are courses that are focused on real issues that are happening within the globe. Um, in particular, we're focused on diversity, equity, inclusion, and sustainability efforts and how organizations can't just, you know, build, for instance, like a financial plan like they used to. Like you can't just build something based off of old finance rules, right? Like you have to take into account how is are these decisions going to be impacted by things that are happening in our world globally and um, including issues with sustainability and diversity and equity inclusion. So I'm super proud that we're putting that framework into our program to make sure all of our learners have that going into their professions. And I think that that will have immediate impact for them. Um, and then again, we have so many electives that are adapted based on what's happening currently. One of the ones I'm really jazzed about is called digital bias. And it's just talking about like, in what ways do we have bias in the way that we consume media, in the way that we consume data. Um, and it's going to be, it's just like one of the coolest courses that we offer. And so um, I'm just very excited about our faculty having issues that they're super passionate about and making electives out of that. Yeah, um, this is kind of future futuristic, this question. Um, over the next three to five years, how do you think the online MBA and specifically your program will evolve? Uh, Jessica, let's start with you. Yeah, I think we will continue to explore, you know, we really love innovation and technology and we know more things are gonna develop and evolve over time. And I see us developing and evolving right alongside of that. Um, I think there's going to be more of a, of a focus on globalization. Um, and so we're going to have to make sure that that is at the forefront of our education. Um, I think that we hope that our program will continue to address and develop a curriculum that responds to that changing world. And we're not afraid to do that because we've done it, you know. Thanks, Jessica and Gail. Yeah, well, I think obviously I think online education will continue to grow. Um, there's a lot of demand for the flexibility and the offerings and just the pace of that program and modality. And at SMU, we really want to be sensitive to market needs, but also the needs of our students. So we're always looking to adapt when necessary. We're always looking to add new electives to our portfolio. Um, and we do that by every so often, every couple of years, surveying our stakeholders, going back to our corporate recruiters, our alums, our current students, our faculty, and asking them what they'd like to see change, what they really enjoyed about the program, what skill set are our students may be lacking in or what do they do well in? And we come back and we do a curriculum overhaul with that. So we're always looking to update um, the program and make sure it's relevant for our students. Thanks, Gail and Robert. Yeah, I mean, just to echo probably what we've already said, but definitely certainly to stay relevant in terms of the electives that we're offering, trying to make sure that our, you know, our faculty who are all experts in their field are as up to date as possible to deliver as up to the minute uh, material as possible. So for us personally, definitely to continue to diversify. So we're really lucky, obviously, that we have a very diverse cohort of people doing all of our courses, but particularly Global Online MBI. It gives people who are in certain countries who may not have the opportunity to study a better opportunity. And particularly last in our last cohort, our number of women participants was 48%. So tantalizingly close to 50-50 in this time round. So 
we're hoping that we'll finally reach that. And yeah, as I said, keep up to date with the technologies. So as we've seen, we've all adapted very much to the technology that's on offer, but that can only continue to get better over the next few years. So hopefully we'll be right on the front of that too. Yeah, that's great to hear. Um, and with a concluding thought, uh, could each of you please share how students get in touch with you or your team if they're interested in your program? Robert. Of course, yeah. So you can reach the admissions team anytime at admissions at esmt.org. And of course, you can just go via the website if that's easier. And of course, on LinkedIn as well. If you need, if we can't uh, answer everything for you, we're also happy to put you in touch with some of our alumni or our ambassadors as well. Great, thank you. And let's go to Northeastern, Jessica. Yeah, so anybody can email us at onlinemba at northeastern.edu. You can also find us online um, at northeastern.edu. And we're happy to assist with any questions or set up a meeting with you if you'd like to chat. Okay, and last but not least, Cox. Yeah, I think all admissions people, we love to chat with prospective students. So don't hesitate to reach out to us. Don't be afraid. Um, you can schedule a one-to-one -one meeting on our website, or you can reach out to us, info at smu.edu. And as Robert said, talk to current students so the best way to kind of know exactly what's going on in, in the program as well. Great. Well, a very big thank you to our guests for joining us today and sharing tons of important information. A big thank you to our viewers for their interests.